All right, so white to move here. We see that we have a knight pinned on f3. Potentially some discovery attacks here. Bishop takes, king takes, check, bishop takes, queen takes g4. Uh, but that doesn't look really good. So we actually have a better move, which is queen e4. We're going to attack the bishop and we are going to attack checkmate at the same time. You guys, are we as strong as Hikaru yet? No. Are we going to understand tactics a little better? No, because you need to train like thousands of tactics to even get there. So black to move here. We notice that we have an attack on the white king. So knight e2 looks interesting. King h1. And then we could potentially play knight g3. We're going to check the king and the rook. So we're winning a piece, um, but we might have something better. We do have something better. We have knight check, king goes to h1. We take, king takes, and chat, spam the checkmate move if you see it. There's checkmate in one after this series. And we have some people having rook h5. That's all right. It took a little bit of time, but we have it now. Rook h5. All right. We're two for two. We have... A weak king once again we got a lot of options here so it seems like we're gonna have a discovery attack as soon as we move the bishops if we play bishop g7 check king takes then we have checkmate all right so what if we play bishop g7 king goes back um then we have rook check king takes queen mate okay what about bishop g7 king g6 then we have queen g5 so Actually, I think that's that's just the checkmate technique. These are nice. We're we're working through the easy puzzles. Too easy, says Jaddy Bear. Black to move. All right, so we're down a pawn and a bishop. But you know what? You know what? These pawns have hopes and dreams. They are trying to get all the way to the first file where they're going to promote into a better life. Okay, cool. So we just have to figure out which pawn to move here. Do we play b2 or do we play a3? Well, if we play b3, we lose because of bishop b1. And then after a3, there's just no way to move these pawns any further. So yeah, b2 loses. I think it has to be a3 because then if you go bishop b1, you go a2 and we're going to promote a queen. So there you go. He can take it, but we got a queen. And this endgame actually looks a little bit tricky because white has six points in exchange for the queen. But, you know... These pawns are never going to promote because of the king, and often you could check the king and the bishop, and we're going to be able to win some material here. All right, white to move. So this one seems pretty easy, too. Actually, they're trying to trick you. They're trying to say queen takes h6. I think that would make a mistake. You take with the rook, and either square the king goes to, then you have queen g6. I think if you take with the queen and you play rook g6, the king can escape. So that's what's supposed to be tricky with this tactic, but... It's, it's not very tricky, so that's okay. Okay, white to move. Well, I think it's just queen c3. We're going to check the king. We're going to threaten the knight. Um, and then if we take the knight, unfortunately, black cannot take back because he loses his queen. So we're just going to be up a full piece here. So yeah, we're, we're making our opponent struggle here. Welcome to Botaslavia, everyone. Okay, so we got maiden two here. The cool thing about this tactic is that we're going to have a double check. So a double check... Honestly, it's really straightforward. You're checking the king with two pieces, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to play king g5. The good thing about checking the king with two pieces is that the only option is to move the king. You can never block two checks at the same time. So there was no move like bishop e7. Now we have a checkmate in one. Rook d8. There you go. We're training our tactical vision here. I guess we're training our, our pattern recognition. That's probably more realistic here. Okay, so queen takes and then knight g7 and then we're gonna take, so that looks pretty nice. White to move here. So, uh, yeah, queen c8 looks good. Um, and then queen d6. And after queen d6, I guess we can give a check and then the king goes here. And how are we winning? How are we winning the queen here? All right, this still looks good. I just don't see how we're supposed to win the queen after. I'm probably I'm probably being dumb. I mean, there's a perpetual and I guess we're in a worse position. So, unless I'm missing a mate somewhere, that should just be the solution. Yeah. Okay. These are the worst tactics. If you get a like if somebody is going to give you a puzzle, at least give me a puzzle that I can win, you know? If I was trying not to win, I would just play regular chess. What are these drawing puzzles? I mean, 
it's, it's very upsetting. I just want satisfaction from the puzzle. Next game. Oh, this one's actually a classical endgame puzzle. Uh, I learned it as a kid. So you only have one winning move as white here, and it looks really equal, right? Two kings and two pawns. But basically what you do is you have to play king c6. The idea behind that is to attack the d5 pawn. Black only has one way to defend. He has to play e4 because he can't go to e5. We're controlling that square with our pawn. So king c6, king e4. And now what you have to do is you have to push the black king away. So it's called Suitsvang, which means that any square he moves to is a bad move. So you play king c5. He's forced to move the king away from protecting the pawn. You're still protecting your pawn, and then you take it and you win. So this is, this is a tactic that you should see all the time if you're playing rapid chess. Even if you have five seconds, you have to have it memorized. You know, if somebody was going to wake you up in the middle of the night with a gun to your head, would you solve it? That's how my chess coach used to ask me if I know end games. He was kind of a scary Romanian dude, so, um, you know, maybe don't ask 11-year-old kids that. But it actually did work as a training method. So, yeah, that was some, some good times. Black to move. So queen f3 looks like the most tempting option. You often look at checks first because they're forcing, so it's easier to calculate it if you can easily guess what your uh, opponent is going to do. Queen f3, if queen d king d2 we're gonna take, okay. Queen f3 and if king here, then where do we go? Check, king goes here, and then what? Um, I'm not seeing this one. King here? And then, no, that, so I, I don't think this is a move. It has to be something else. Okay, what other checks do we have? Well, we also have rookie three. White can't take because it, it's checked. So rookie three, and then the king can't go here, can't go here. If he goes there, then we probably t check. Okay, let, let's make the first move. Oh, man. this Why is the puzzle giving us the worst lines? The puzzle is literally giving us the worst lines. That's okay. Black to move. Well, so we have three squares until we're promoting. This is the square that the white king needs to get into. So if the king were here, then the white king would have actually caught the pawn. If it's on g2, it's not going to catch the pawn. The idea being that he, the king would have entered the square. So we just push. Our king is in the square of this pawn, meaning that we can catch the pawn before it promotes. Um, why did the, the computer is such a troll? Who promotes to a bishop? I understand it doesn't matter what you promote to, but come on, computer. Jeez. All right, white to move here. So we got a pawn up here. The problem is if the black knight ever takes the pawn, and then we're gonna be drawing because a bishop versus a knight is a draw, but we are trying to win here. The pawn is trying to get to h8. So let's see. If we just move a simple move like h5, what is black gonna do? Either move here, we're gonna take the knight away, so I'm not too impressed with that. Um, why, why can't we just push the pawn? Okay, and now we just don't let the king come in. And now we push and we push. Okay, there we go. Wait to move, equal material, equal material, just imagine the pawn is here, so we have the same amount of pieces. The king's actually, I mean, black's king looks a little bit less safe because there's no bishop in front of it. Let's see what tactics we have here. Um, oh, okay, so this one is going to be bishop a3, we're going to attack the rook. The rook needs to move, say it goes to d8, and then we put our bishop on d6, pinning the queen and the king. He has to take, then he's going to trade off his rook for a bishop, so we're up an exchange. Oh, thank you so much for subscribing, Alabula, I appreciate it, thank you so much. Alright, so rook takes, rook takes, and then I think we have queen a1 and just winning an extra rook. Um, when you find a good move, look for a better one. Are there any checkmate opportunities? I don't think so. We're gonna be up a full rook, so we're, we're pretty happy with, with that. Let's go for it. Let's take it. Nice. Um, white, white to move. Whoa, how are we supposed to win this? This, this looks like an unfair battle. I mean, black has a rook on g7, a queen on h6. I got these two little pawns, but, but they're feeling pretty weak standing up against such mighty enemies on g7 and h6 but hold on ladies and gentlemen on a7 we have a pawn that is about to promote into a queen yes this pawn is going through puberty and it's gonna come out shining okay so what you need to consider here are what are black's threats so if black wants to draw it looks like he at least has a perpetual with queen c1 if our king goes to h1 the king queen goes back to h6 if the king goes to f2 then i think he comes with the rook and we're probably gonna be checkmated so 
I'm not crazy about that. So how do we stop this checkmate, but also help our pawn promote? Well, queen b1, we're going to give a check here. If the king moves back onto h8, then we're going to promote with a check, which is even better. If you promote with a check, then black doesn't have anything to do. If we go queen b1 and the queen goes to b1, we trade and we still promote. Rook to b1, the same thing. So queen b1, and then we're going to take, and then we're going to promote. It's, this puzzle is actually, I'm just going to put it one more time to explain. It's important to not promote to a queen right away because then you're going to give black drawing chances when you should be winning. So do be careful with that. All right, I'm just going to complete this again. Um, wait to move. I've seen this tactic a billion times, so now I finally know it. Okay, the threat is queen h8, so we're going to have to play rook h5. And you might be thinking, Alexandra, you're saying Chad is on drugs, but you're suggesting a move that gives a free rook. And to you, I'll say no. I am also a warlord and I know what I'm doing. Rook h5 actually works because after queen takes, you have rook a6, which forces the king not to go forward because there are no moves. The king's got to go backwards. The king's got to go backwards and then we're going to pin the nice rook to the queen. All right, there we go. There we go. See, that was a nice one. That was a nice one. Oh my gosh. So much time. I'm not Andrea, you guys. This is Alexandra. This is Alexandra. Stop confusing me for the younger gremlin. The younger gremlin is not here right now. White to move here. Okay, so what's what's going on? We have equal material, but what the heck? It looks like black is about to take on b2, so I'm not too crazy about that. If we play rook e8 check, um, let's see. If the rook goes back, we can take, take, and then this knight is hanging. So basically, you see the rook is protecting the knight. You want to distract it. Um, let's see. Queen e8, rook e8. What else can he do? He can take, queen takes, and then what happens if the queen goes back to f8? Because then if we take, king takes, the knight is actually protected. So there is a little bit of a trick here that I have to be careful about. Okay, rook e8, rook takes, queen takes, and queen here. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to do in that situation. Is there, is there another move order? For example, can we take first here and then play? No, I don't think so. Um, we can't take the knight. I mean, okay. Rook, rook d7 right away. Rook takes, rook check might actually be better. Yeah, because then rook takes, queen takes, and then we're going to threaten the rook. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so now we got the puzzle, but actually... I, I know we like spamming, but this is actually a, an important point. One thing people often do wrong in puzzles is the move order, right? So we understand that the idea in this position is that the black rook is defending this knight and we have ideas on, we have rookie eight ideas. So what you usually want to do to decide between the two move orders is to calculate them both and not just go for the first one you see. So now we're going to take on d7. Rook e8, he's forced to take. Queen e8, we're attacking the king and the rook. And now we're up a bishop here. Okay, so our queen is under attack. The first move that comes to my mind is rook d1. Um, the reason for that is that the rook is pinned, so he cannot take my queen. If the rook takes on d1, then we have queen g2 with checkmate. Um, let's see. There's another issue, though. What if the rook takes like this? Eh, then it's not so pretty. Okay, so move order. Move order. What about queen takes first? King takes, then we play here, and it's checkmate. Cool. So cal so understand the main idea of the position, then look at the various options and just make sure you're not making a move order problem for solving these. So I think we have checkmate in two here. This king is not in a good position. I realize we don't have a queen, but that's okay. Because we're going to go check, and then the king only has one move, which is g5. The knight is protecting this bishop, and then we push f4, and somehow everything is protected. This is kind of a little cutie over here. This is very cute. All right, white to move here. Well, I mean, we have two pieces, so this is really gonna simplify our calculations over here. Um, we're going this way, black's going this way. Okay, so push, push, push. We're gonna get a queen. If he gets a queen, then I'm guessing we got some trick ruskies around here. It probably has to be check. The king's gotta go to e2. Um, we take. The king's got to go to e3. We probably have some type of perpetual there. So, And if he promotes to a knight, then it's just not so good. So is it perpetual? Shit! We're bad, chat. Oh, man. See, 
we put in slow mode on chat and slow mode turned on in my brain too and I, I just got really confused here and, and didn't know what to do. It, it's over for me, chat. It's over. <sighs> got one wrong. We got one wrong. Oof. Okay. Uh, Queen C5, no, because of, of King D2, right? That's why it doesn't look good. Um... What is this? So it's not queen c3? Oh, because of queen queen d3. So maybe we do have to play queen c5. You guys are right, we have to play queen c5. I got rejected by OHSU, but I got into med school in California. I mean, for med school, any med school you get into is pretty incredible, right? So congratulations, that's awesome. I'm sure it was a ton of hard work. I can't, I can't imagine how um, relieved you are right now. Cali Med School. Yeah, that's that's incredible. One of the best states in the US and med school. White to move. So we just have to decide what we want to take this with. If we take with the queen, we're s oh, okay. So there there's some funny business here. Okay. So if we take with the knight, we're also attacking the bishop on g4. You see that, ladies and gentlemen. All the five heads in here, I need you to follow closely with me. So knight takes c2. If bishop takes c2, attacking our queen, then I think we give a check and then we take back. So this is the only way to not win a piece, uh, to not lose a piece. Because if we play queen takes d2, um, sorry, to win a piece. And knight takes and it's just equal material. But this way we have an extra piece. And we're going to protect our rook here. There we go. So we're down a queen and a bishop here. But this king has wandered way too far into enemy territory here. And I just don't think, I don't think he's going to be okay. I don't think he's going to be okay. Um, I, I did have BTTV enabled before. I don't know why it isn't right now. It should be. Okay, so we just have to find the checkmate. Um, let's see. So we, what checks do we have here? We got check on F2 and check on F1. Check on F2 is, doesn't look as good to me because it seems that the black king can actually get out alive. Check on F1, then he's going to play ro king E3. And I guess we could check on D1. And then he goes king D4. And then we go C3. And he takes on D3. And then I ask us ourselves, where, where do we go from there? Hmm. What about knight d1 first? Taking away this scape square, threatening rook f1, and then there's nowhere for the king to go. I don't see, after knight d1, how to defend against this. So it has to be here, and then we check, and then we mate. Next idea. Black to move. Okay, so it looks like we have a really nice attack. Um, queen takes g1 looks interesting because queen takes, knight takes, king goes back, and we checkmate. Okay, well, it looks interesting because it's just correct. That was not as exciting. I was going to go for a longer explanation there, but that's, that's all, all we have for today. So, white to move. We're down a lot, but there's a queen hanging here. Is this puzzle just taking the queen? Did chess.com see that I never take free queens and, and do something funny with these puzzles? Bishop d5. I guess you're supposed to see bishop d5. You can't take because of the pin, and we're just going to be out material. No, I feel like chess.com is, is trolling me with this. It was very funny. Black to move. Well, where where is this little king Aruski going, hmm? Okay, queen check. King here or here, only options, and then we have mate, and there's no way to stop it. Okay. Cool. Let's keep going. Black to move. Uh, okay, we got knight f6. And then there's only one move, which is king takes g5. That is then met by rook g8. He has to then play king h4, and we take on h2. Kill deer 38. Thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. I, I like the sugar free Red Bull, but I ran out. White to move. Our queen is under attack. Okay, what are we gonna what are we gonna do about that? The queen is is in some trouble here. Um, I feel like I've gotten this tactic before. Sack queen. 
we we might we might sack the queen at some point. Okay, so if rook takes f7, uh, I mean you just take that looks that looks terrible. That lo that looks bad. We don't have to sack the queen. We can move the queen. I just don't know where. Here, no. Uh, queen f7 doesn't look good to me. That looks like a bad sack. Queen takes here, takes, and then do something with the rook. I don't love that either. The lobster pincer attack. No, I haven't. I haven't. Um, okay, queen g5. What's the idea behind queen g5? I mean, it's a safe, it's a safe square. But it's kind of boring. I'm using chess.com, Black Ash. Let me, let me put the logo on. You're right. I forgot. Now you guys are all going to know what chess site we're using. Here you go. Boom, ba -dum, bum, 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 chess.com. Okay, I'm done. I'm sorry. Uh, no, never again. Never again. I can't sing, by the way. You, your ears probably are. You guys, if you think that's bad, you should hear how bad I mean normally. So, it was one note, not 27. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Does Queen G5 work here? Is that it? Is that it? Is it really just Queen G5? I mean, Anthony said it, so now I'm suspicious. You know what? If it's wrong... Damn it, I kind of wanted it to be wrong. Why is Anthony always right? Anthony, for those of you who don't know, is a 12-year-old Canadian kid who's really good at chess, and he comes in here to troll, and he comes up with really good move suggestions. Okay, black to move. Um, I mean, I, I see a bishop, and I want to take it, but there's probably better. It's probably better. Okay, so what if we play queen g4 first? If the queen moves away, we take the bishop, pawn takes, and we go, Ooh, mate on d1, baby! Hello, Mr. King! Do you like how close I am to you? Said the queen. And the king said, oh shit. Sorry, um, this is why I can't do story time. You take first, move order, move order. Anyway, and the king said, well, it's not nice that you're so close to me because the white queen, you see she's on E3 and she can see what you're doing. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's kind of awkward, isn't it? But too bad, you're mated, GG. Next game, let's pretend we didn't get it wrong and I'll stop whispering. Okay, uh, black to move. So, what is the idea here? <sighs> How do we deal with this? Okay, so takes, takes, king c4, and we could try to go for the pawns. Um, I think that has to be the, the move order. But do we, do we play king c5, or do we put... Oh, okay, sorry. We take, take, and then we push f5. If the king goes to b1, we push a2. If the king goes to a1, well, it sucks because he has no moves left, right? So he's going to have to push g4. We're going to take his pawn. We have three more squares until we promote and checkmate the king. And three is less than four. So, wow. Big brain explanations, I know. I know. Okay, so this is a win. White to move. And this queen looks like it's wandered a little too far from home. So... We will do as the big bad wolf and and try to eat the queen, just like we ate the grandma. Where's this queen gonna go? Um, let's see. If we play h3, then the queen's gotta go to h5. I do not see any alternatives. And then we're gonna push one more time. And honestly, that's it. That I think that's it. Am I? Oh, the queen takes here. Okay. I totally saw that, but then we play rook h2. So, hoppa. Boom, baby. Boom, baby. She's younger than Andrea. Oh, thank you, Hyde. Please compliment me again. If you guys think I look 18 or younger, I mean, I will take the compliment and run. I will take that comment and I will post it on my wall as a poster, as motivation that I'm aging well. That's all I want. Okay, I'm usually not self-conscious, but my younger sister is 18 and she makes old jokes all the time. It's actually a little bit tilting. At first, I didn't care, but now sometimes I'm like, haha, but it hurts inside. It hurts. Huh, huh, checkmate. Okay, so check if, 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 if the king goes here, we're gonna go checkmate, sir. 
Um, if the rook goes to f2, then we're gonna play queen g3. And then what? Hmm, well, if the king goes there, yes. Um, my check. Okay, there has to be something better here. Does Cole have a drip collection? Okay, are you trolling me? There's all. Uh, Kohl's would be the last store to have a drip collection. Kohl's would have the anti-drip collection. You just, you can't wear it. Um, yeah, queen h3, that's what, that's what I thought as well. I wasn't sure if there was a better variation. Queen h3, um, and, and then what? Then where do we go from here? See, I didn't do it properly. You're supposed to do the tactic all the way through, because now the only thing I see is another check. And, yeah, it's just a draw. Okay, it's a draw. Sorry, sorry. Um, let's see. White, white to move. So rook b7 check. And if bishop takes rook here, king here, bishop here, rook here, queen here, and I guess that works both ways. What? Yeah. I love the tactics. You just you get a sense of satisfaction as you solve through these.